Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating beta using SPSS. In counseling research, oftentimes we are interested in determining the probabilities of a type 1 error and a type 2 error. A type 1 error is referred to as an alpha error, and a type 2 error is referred to as a beta error. Alpha is the probability that we will reject the null hypothesis when in fact it is true. So in essence, we're finding a difference that isn't there when we commit a type 1 error or an alpha error. An alpha is very easy to determine because we set the alpha value. For example, using these fictitious data, I have an SPSS. You can see I have one independent variable, treatment, and there's three levels here, substance use, depression, and trauma. So let's say that these three levels are the emphasis for a particular treatment. And then we have symptom scores here in this dependent variable. So to determine the alpha value, we just have to know what we're going to set the alpha to. And we know that for most social science research, alpha is set at 5%. So the probability of making a type 1 error is equal to 5% is what we set. Now beta error is a bit more complex. We don't specify beta error. Rather the sample size, the significance level, and the effect size influence the beta value. And similarly they influence the power. And power is equal to 1 minus the beta value. Power is the probability that we will detect a difference that's actually there, that will detect a true difference. And the beta value is the probability of a type 2 error. And a type 2 error is when we fail to reject a false null hypothesis. So in essence, we say there's no difference when in fact there is a difference. So in SPSS, in order to calculate the beta value, we're going to first calculate the power. So I'm going to go to Analyze, and then General Linear Model, Univariate. The independent variable treatment has three levels, so I'm going to use an ANOVA. So I'm going to move the treatment variable to the fixed factor list box, and scores, which is the dependent variable, to the dependent variable text box. Now, of course, there are many assumptions to ANOVA. I'm not going to go over all of those. I'm just going to demonstrate how to determine power and beta. So I'm going to go to Options, and I'm going to move Overall and Treatment over to Display Means 4 to this list box. And then down in Display, I'm going to check off Descriptive Statistics, Estimates of Effect Size, and Observe Power. Click Continue and then click OK. So of interest to us here would be the sample size. We can see that it's 45 and the p-value in this case is 0 0.004 so this is a statistically significant finding. Partial eta squared, which is the effect size, 0.233 and we can see that the observed power is 0.88 or 88 percent. So with this sample size, and this p-value, and this effect size, there's an 88% chance of detecting a difference that's really there. So we know that power is equal to 1 minus beta. So if we solve for beta using power, we can see that the beta value, the probability of a type 2 error, again with this sample size, this p-value, and this effect size, would be equal to 0.12 or 12 percent. So the probability of making a type 2 error in this case would be 12 percent. So the alpha we've set to 0 0.05 so there's a 5 percent chance of making a type 1 error or having a false positive and a 12 percent chance of having a type 2 error or a false negative. Now it's important to recognize here that both for power 
and for beta because of their relationship, because of power equaling 1 minus beta, that it's specific to this sample size, p-value, and effect size. So if I would go back in to the data editor, and let's just say I change this one value of 31, uh, record 5, to 61. And then I go back to analyze and I rerun that ANOVA without changing anything else. So looking at these results, of course, the alpha value is still going to be at 5%, at 0 0.05, but the observed power has changed, and that means that beta has changed. So with the sample size of 45, and this p-value, 0 0.015, and this effect size, 0.182, the power has been reduced to 75.5%, 0 0.755, and beta the beta value has been increased to 0.245, or 24.5%. So the probability of having a false negative increased to 24.5%. So as you can see, using the observed power in SPSS in ANOVA, you can calculate the beta value quickly and determine the probability of making a type 2 error. I hope you found this video on calculating the beta value in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.